already know the gospel of the gospels of these Sundays prepare us for the end, the end of the year, the end of our life, um, <clears throat> and the visitation of our Lord. And so today the gospel is the parable of the Lord in the gospel uh, that the, the Lord gives in the gospel according to St. Luke chapter 20 about, um, as we just heard, um, the vine, the owner of the vineyard giving um, the vineyard or leasing it to vine dressers, going away and then asking for the fruit. And uh, the church, again, places it in, in this week to prepare us for the visitation of our Lord, whether on the day that we depart from this world or whenever we ask him, as we say, thy kingdom come, right? And we ask the Lord to come to us as often as, as he wills and often as possible. The one who is close to God wants God to come close to them. The one who is living in a sinful state is avoiding God as much as possible. <clears throat> so um, the person who is seeking the kingdom and seeking the holy life, ask God, to, as, as the psalm says today, return we beseech you, O God of hosts, visit this vine and this vineyard which your right hand has planted. So the common here, the theme here today in the parable is obvious. <clears throat> God is the one who gives grace and blessing, and uh, man is the one who does not respond accordingly. Right? God is giving, man is taking. God is loving, man is hating. Of course, this is not the original intention of, of human nature. Is is for us who were created in the likeness. Um, and according to the image of God, we're supposed to be like him. But because of, of sin, we end up being the opposite. So the historical explanation here of the parable is the response of the people of Israel in, in the scriptures to God after he's sending, who are the vine dressers here at Symbolic Or in the gospel, in the gospel of the parable of today, how many times does he send out servants? Yes, three times, right? And the last time, his, his son, right? So it's very clear. The symbol, symbolism is very clear. But who are these three groups of servants reflecting? The prophets, right? Because the prophets are preparing the way for the coming and, and um, directing the people to prepare themselves for the visitation of the Lord. Right? Some people say um, it also includes the apostles, and other people say, well, the, the Christians can be concluded even today. So it's basically the prophets in the Old Testament, the, the uh, apostles in the New Testament, and the Christians uh, of today, right, in a sense. <clears throat> so, but the idea here is, where am I in the story, right? Hopefully, I don't think I'm the owner, <laughs> because that would be foolish. Right. Um, sometimes we act like the owner, even though we are just a servant. Right. Um, some, but oftentimes, I think, especially in the beginning of our spiritual life, or when we feel far from God, we act like these sinful um, vine dressers, where um, God, in His love and His patience, is is trying to bring me to be like Him, and I am responding the opposite. Right. Um, and so, but what ends up happening, hopefully, is that um, no matter how I keep responding negatively to God, he's patient. Um, I continuously, like, ignore and mock and argue against his servants, whether in scriptures or in my life. Um, but God doesn't stop trying to reveal his love to me. <clears throat> and so um, he even gives the most he can. Right? He gives his only begotten son into the world, hoping things will be different. Um, but uh, you know the, the end of that story. So the idea here is how can we get, get from maybe the natural inclinations of the fallen nature of humanity, um, how can we rise above that to be more Christ-like, 
and more godlike. And so there's a spectrum. There's there's a huge spectrum. I, I'll try won't. I'll try not to explain all of them, but um, th this just hope hopefully will help us understand what are the levels that I need to rise above in my life in order to be uh, at the top, to be like um, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ <clears throat> and God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to return evil with goodness and patience and love and long-suffering. It's a, it's a tall order for the person who doesn't have God, um, but with the grace, we're able to achieve this. So the, I, I guess you could say the bottom of the barrel or the worst response is the response um, of what the vine dressers did in, in the gospel of today. Um, God gave them good. The owner gave good. He gave them um, the vineyard to take care of. He gave them fruit. And what was the response? So he gave them good. They responded evil. I think that's the worst uh, scenario of all of the ones that we're going to talk about today. <clears throat> right? And not only was the the negative response physical, right? They beat the servants and they ended up killing the son. Um, but it was also, uh, they, they gave shame, they, um, it says they treated him shamefully, right? So here's the emotional part of sometimes when we treat others, right? We treat others not only physically, but emotionally we hurt them, right? Um, and then socially they sent him away. So they, they banned him from, the area, right? And then even financially, they didn't give him anything um, that pertained to his his master. <clears throat> so the idea here is each time that um, God responded in love, the evil became worse and worse, right? Um, the So this shows that if, if we don't respond accordingly um, in the other rungs of the spiritual life, we can get to the state. Okay, um, <clears throat> so we pray that none of us are in this category. What's the category just above this is when someone does us wrong, we do even more wrong to them, right? So the first category is someone does us good, we do them wrong. <laughs> that's, that's completely unacceptable, right? Even in um, the standards of non-Christian groups, right? <clears throat> and then also to return evil with more evil is is unacceptable as, as it's almost as bad as the previous category. And so it's like some even people honestly believe that if they turn it up a notch and they escalate the problem, maybe this person will um, uh, will back down or maybe they will stop the madness. Of course, th this doesn't work. <laughs> um, and then the category just above that is we turn, return evil with less evil. Okay, at least I'm not doing as bad as them, but I'm still, so um, I justify myself by saying, you know, okay, you did this to me, I'm going to be a little better than you, but I'm still going to return evil uh, upon you because you deserve it. That's obviously that doesn't sound um, proper, but, um, and oftentimes we justify ourselves by even by looking at the truth. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, <clears throat> So again, we turn the worst is we turn evil good with evil. Then we turn evil with more evil. Then we turn evil with less evil. It's still evil. <laughs> right? That's that's the idea here. But we have to put everything in perspective so that um, we know what our calling is as Christians and followers of the Word. <clears throat> so the best uh, response. Um, or the second best response I could say was at, we return evil with nothing or with silence. Um, it's a good step in the right direction of someone who's trying to do the right thing but can't yet. So, like, you know, like you've heard, you know, if you can't say anything positive, don't say anything at all. Okay, that's that's a good step, but that doesn't mean we're there. <laughs> that means we're on the road. Um, and so sometimes people give the silent treatment as a punishment to the other person. That's not what we're talking about here. Um, we're talking... Uh, about St. John Chrysostom gives the example of, like in in boxing, right? Um, sometimes you fight, and sometimes when the other person is trying to hit you, you just withdraw and step away so that they're just beating the air, right? And they'll get tired, and 
you have saved yourself from harm. That's in a sense is you're giving the other person space and you're also taking space so that you're not in. There's some opportunities where we can change the environment slightly so that we're not being a stumbling block to the other person. And that's where sometimes silence is helpful. Um, but as long as we're not taking advantage of the silence, and that's why sometimes people have um, animosity towards others for years and years because they just cut communication. That doesn't usually help anyone if it's for an extended pe period of time. There's no closure. Um, <clears throat> so the, the next category is basically uh, the same. So instead of returning evil with nothing, we're also returning good with nothing. Um, so maybe it's even worse than the category that I just mentioned um, because either the person is ignorant of the goodness um, and if we're ignorant, God will forgive, of course. But if we're taking advantage of the goodness of others and the goodness of God, it's a dangerous and a slippery slope because it could potentially lead to problems with, with those same people in the future or even others. Um, so because everyone in the flesh has a limit of how much love that they can give. And if you're taking advantage of someone who's just loving and giving and trying to follow the gospel and you're not responding at all, then it's hurt, very hurtful uh, to the person. And probably they, they might stop the communication uh, to give you the message. <clears throat> so anyways, uh, that's the, the next category. Um, probably the saddest category is returning nothing with nothing. So there's, there's no interchange of, of, of love and good or bad between people. Um, and oftentimes we see this in, in society. Um, it's sad, right? There's, there's no good and there's no bad, but if there's no good, it's bad. As, as um, one of the fathers was saying, there's only two places that we're going to go. You know, either you go to, to heaven or paradise or you, or you go to Hades. Like, if you're not in Hades, then that's good. You're in, you're in paradise. But if you're not in paradise, there's no other third place, uh, according to our faith. <clears throat> so we don't want to be in that category either, right? Just responding blankly to everything, whether good or, 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 um, or not good. Um, like I said, if, if it's res responding um, not, nothing towards the bad, that means we're trying. At least we're not making it worse. <clears throat> okay. and, and the last one, as we know, um, is returning evil with good. Um, by the way, some people say, oh, I'm returning good. But let's say we're returning good with someone is treating me nice, I'm treating them nice. That's more natural than it is spiritual. Um, of course, this is the ideal relationship that we have in fellowship with Christians. Um, but like the Lord said in the gospel, even the evildoers know how to give good gifts to their children, right? So God is calling us to, to above a higher standard than that. Um, <clears throat> and um, like St. Peter of, to, of his, in his Catholic epistle today, he says, um, all of you be of one mind, having compassion for one another, love as brothers, be tender hearted, be courteous, courteous, not returning evil for evil or reviling for vi reviling, but on the contrary, blessing. Knowing this, that you are called to this. So our calling is, is, is um, not to return evil for evil, like we were saying, but blessing. Um, why? That we may inherit the blessing. <clears throat> okay. Um, and then he says, who will harm you if you are followers of, of if you become followers of, of what is good? Meaning, if I am trying to always do good, no evil can penetrate my heart. Is because my focus is on the kingdom and um, we become humble to the point where we re recognize ourselves as sinners. So if someone calls us out as sinners, <laughs> oh, yes, you're right. Like even sometimes respond, people respond with humor because like there, there was no, um, there, no injury. I really, if, if someone is on the ground and someone tries to push them, you can't push someone who's on the ground, <laughs> but you could push someone who's trying to climb um, uh, uh, a ladder <clears throat> or who is standing up. So the more humble we are, the less um, pain we receive from others who try to hurt us in any way. Um, of course, we're talking 
the, the emotional gift. So, um, the main way that we try to improve along the spectrum of goodness, like we said in the beginning, is to first change our perspective um, and to focus on certain things. So the first thing we focus, or the first person we focus on, is God, because the God is in charge, and the more I realize that He is in charge of anything, I won't feel the need to take vengeance, to 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 be angry, to get my rights, because like these vineyard, uh, sorry, the servants of the owner, when they came, they could have taken action, they could have fought back, they could have brought an army, but they just went away, um, even though they were shamefully treated and beaten. They went back to their owner and say, this is what happened. You take care of it. Um, and that's what I need to do. And when I see that he keeps responding out of love and he doesn't take uh, vengeance immediately, that's important. Um, because when I see that and he is my owner and he is my master, then I pray that one day I can have that same heart. Um, <clears throat> so we don't focus on our... Um, injury we focus on the lord on the cross we focus on the son who was killed not the servant who was beaten right um because we can never be good in and of ourselves but it's only through the goodness of god that brought us out um through that god brings out of us through the work of the holy spirit okay um so being good is not a personal choice it may start with a personal choice but it ends with the submission of God who sends his Holy Spirit to work in us to do good. Does that make sense? So we are not good in and of ourselves, but it's only the grace of God that helps us to do good. So if we're not asking God for the grace, we can't be good. We can do good things, but you're not going to be a good person because we need the grace of God that cleanses us and purifies us and empowers us to, to be like him. <clears throat> okay? Um, so that's the first thing or person we need to look at. The second person we need to look at is ourselves, right? So we, we look at God to find love. We look at ourselves to find the sin or to, to, to realize the truth, right? So when I'm in a conflict or um, I'm, I'm in doubt of who was right and who was wrong, usually we say, no, I was, I was right, they were wrong, right? The whole problem of the tension that happens between people when they're arguing is that everyone's trying to prove themselves right, right? Um, <clears throat> and so, like we said, we have to take the humble road, road to say, well, what did I do or what did I say or, or that, that was wrong or that could have been even interpreted as wrong even though my intentions were right, right? So we have to find any mistakes at all that, that we have made and own up to them. If we can't find any mistakes, if to go to someone and ask for their advice, whether your father of confession or your spiritual guide or um, someone who will act um, in an unbiased way, because if you go to a good friend, they're like, oh, yeah, no, you're right. That's not what we want here. We want the we we want to repent, right? Um, yes, we might have been right in a few things, but no one is right in everything except for God. So. Maybe you were right in, in what you said or what you did at one point, but you could have been wrong a hundred other times. <clears throat> so that's what the person needs to focus on. Um, the other thing we need to focus on is if I am being emotional, if, they, if there is anger, right, especially, um, it's because usually there is sin involved. And usually it's the sin of pride, right? <clears throat> so there's a story in, in the book of... Um, Second Kings of Elisha the prophet, the the disciple of Elijah the prophet, um, where there were some Syrian raiders who came. Um, they were trying to attack Israel, right? And every time they had a plan, God through His Holy Spirit told Elisha, and Elisha told the king. So they were ready. It's like, what's going on? <laughs> who is so that so the the king of <clears throat> of um, Syria, say, who, who's the who, who's the mole here? They're like, no, it's it's none of us, but it's that prophet Elisha um, who who's telling the king. <clears throat> so they went to go attack Elisha, <laughs> and um, 
just to kind of summarize the story quickly, they tried to capture him, but and his servant was was nervous, and he said, "Okay, God revealed to him, um, the more, there's more of us than more of them." So he saw, you know, so God opened the eyes of the servant to see um, horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. But anyway, um, <clears throat> the army came and surrounded them, and Elijah prayed, and they were all struck with blindness. Then he said, don't worry, I'll take you. So he took them right in, in, into Samaria before the king. So the king is happy. He's like, okay, should I kill him? He's like, no. Well, they're the enemy. What do I do? He said, I want you to bring them food and drink. Um, <clears throat> so he prepared a great feast. The king, the enemy, prepared a great feast. Again, this is the Old Testament. Um, <clears throat> and after they ate and drank, he sent them away. And they went to their master. Um, and then the gospel says, or the, the scripture says in the Old Testament, so the bands of the Syrian raiders did not come anymore to the land of Israel. Right? So there's no more animosity. There's no more war. So how did they, how did they um, create peace? They fed the, and their enemy. <laughs> of course, of course um, the prophet who was faithful and um, and dependent upon God um, was was the one by whom these things happened. So the idea here is, um, was was Elisha angry? No, he was full of mercy. Um, uh, Isaac the Syrian says um, about this story is that because Elisha was full of, of God's grace and was merciful towards his enemies, this came about, right? So he says, um, if you're truly merciful, when you are wrongfully and cruelly deprived of what is yours, you will not be angry within or without. So if I'm angry, then that means there's something wrong with me, not with the person only. Yes, there's holy anger. We're not talking about that. But he says the damages will be absorbed by mercy as wine is diluted with a lot of water. Right? He says, do good to those who do you wrong cheerfully just as the blessed Elisha did to his enemies when they came to capture him. So, and then he says, if you're really humble, don't be troubled when you're accused falsely. He said, even if you're accused falsely, you shouldn't be troubled. Um, don't waste your breath on the thing, but take upon yourself the unjust words speak, spoken against you while not being concerned for yourself to persuade others that the matter, don't, don't try to prove yourself right. Um, and then he goes on and makes uh, several examples of those in scripture and those of the saints who, um, like for example, Saint Marina, uh, the righteous, uh, not the martyr, um, who, who was falsely accused. And she took that ac accusation upon herself, even though she was completely in the right until her death. And then they realized that um, those who shamefully treated her and judged her and treated her wrongfully, they repented after her death, um, not before. <clears throat> so, um, again, we look to God for love, we look to ourselves for sin, and we look to others for mercy. Um, and this is the, the formula that how we can rise um, each rung of this ladder to, to overcome evil with good. <clears throat> um, uh, the last point is that um, our job in, in these circumstances is to pray to pray for our salvation, number one, and also the salvation of others. Um, and even if we feel like we want God to send the right message to the other person, but it's probably better if he uses someone else. Um, why? Because if God wronged, if someone else wronged me, and, and uh, I want God to send them the message, if he uses me, I might fall into pride. Right? So I can ask God, please send someone else. Um, just like Job. Remember Job in, in, in the scriptures? Um, you know his story, right? And you know the so-called friends that were sent to him to correct him. And at the very end of the story, um, God is the one who defends Job, and he corrects the friends, and then he tells the friends, go offer sacrifice or Give these sacrifices to Job, and he will pray for you. So the, the responsibility of Job was to pray and to let God act. So that's usually what our response is, is to pray 
and to ask God to act, and he has to send someone, send someone else but me, because I want to stay um, humble. <clears throat> so may the grace of God give us the, the ability to, to follow in his footsteps and to not act as the owner, to not act as the wicked vine dressers, um, but to humbly submit ourselves like the servants uh, who emulated the, the son who gave himself willingly in order to transform um, all those who are willing to come to him. Glory be to him now and from which the age will